too easy. Tiny's planet number one. All right, guys, listen up. CTR was good, but can C and K crash a few parties? I'm not funny, am I? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Game Talk, where we talk about games, new and old. And today, we're going to be covering the preceding game to Crash Team Racing. And how could they improve upon... Why the fuck is this game so good? The best kart race I ever made. And I can't imagine my life without this ridiculously addictive game. And that sucks because this game makes me wet. By the way, did you know this game is amazing? Crash Nitro Kart. A game where you crash your kart into nitro. Again, I'm not funny. To be honest, I played Crash Nitro Kart before CTR, and I heard that CTR was the superior kart racer, but for the time, this was my favorite. Alongside Mario Kart Wii, that game is simply an orgasm. Just like Crash The Wrath of Cortex, this game had a port on a number of consoles. CNK made an appearance on PS2, Xbox, the GameCube, and even had a separate port on the Game Boy Advance and the... N-Gage? Huh? Since 1999 when Naughty Dog created their final Crash game, a number of developers had continued on the Crash legacy. Eurocom took that role with Crash Bash, and Traveler's Tales did their part with Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. But a certain company by the name of Vicarious Visions created two Crash GBA titles, Crash Bandicoot XS, also known as The Huge Adventure in the US, and Crash Bandicoot 2 Entranced. Not too long after their release, Vicarious Visions did their take on a Crash car racer. Thus, C and K, Crash Nitro Kart was born. And if the name Vicarious Vision sounds familiar to you, they're also the ones behind that game that gives me an aneurysm for how good it turned out. So hopes are real high for revisiting this game because it seems that their work has a lot of passion put into it. It really shows because their previous games turned out fairly well. But at the same time, the quality of the Crash games leading up to this point seemed to be lacking. The games weren't terrible by any means, but it just didn't have the same charm that the original trilogy and CTR had. So at the same time, who knows how well this game can turn out? Can it top CTR? Can it compare with it? And how does it hold up today? So turn on your good old PS2, chuck in that disc, and plug your controller in, and let's find out if this game can top CTR. Just a sec, before we get in, I really like the intro to this game. It's nostalgic, alright? Universal Interactive presents a turbocharged extravaganza by Vicarious Visions. Brace yourself! For Crash Nitro Kart! I'm sorry, I had to feed my nostalgia, I was hungry. So once again, this game has a plot. But it's actually alright this time. It's pretty stupid, don't get me wrong, but I actually am interested in it rather than So you pesky little earth slugs like to race, eh? Well I, Nitrous Oxide, am the fastest racer in the galaxy. I wanna play a little game I like to call Survival of the Fastest. If I win, I turn your planet into a parking lot! So the FMV intro starts where we see Crash's house out in the Insanity Beach in the Wumpa Islands, where Crash is taking a nap, Coco is next to the car on her laptop, and Crunch Bandicoot from the Wrath of Cortex is conversating with Aku Aku about exercise or something, when suddenly a huge beam of light shines through their window, and they get abducted. Then it cuts to Cortex's castle, where Cortex is of course plotting how to defeat the Bandicoots, where he orders Tiny Tiger to see if Dr. Engine requires assistance, where... Bingo dial, throw the switch! Violence against Australia women says no. Then they get abducted by this light. When Crash comes to, he heads outside to find himself in a coliseum in space with aliens in the audience cheering him on. Crash sees Coco and Crunch and also sees Cortex's team there as well. Just as they notice each other, a hologram of an alien named Emperor Velo the 27th appears and explains that they will have to race and compete in a galaxy championship throughout four planets and if they refuse, Velo will destroy Earth. Like I said, stupid, but honestly a lot more interesting than CTR and has way more personality to the story. And this story being in outer space just adds a whole lot of possibility for the settings of the tracks. Something I also love about this intro is that classic crash slapstick comedy. How can I defeat those pesty bandicoots? Hmm. And conquer the world, of course. Bandicoots! I can squash bandicoots. Now it's time that we get into the gameplay of this game and see how it differs from CTR. 
Wow. Oh my god. Going back into this game, I forgot how well this game controls. It's just like CTR, but with slightly less slippiness. It definitely feels a lot smoother than CTR, but I would say not as fast paced and chaotic. That doesn't make it bad, but I much prefer the chaotic pace of CTR. The boosting system is the same as well. Hopping off ramps and high ledges will still boost you, and the manual boosting system is nearly identical. While power sliding, pressing the opposite trigger when the bar turns red, it allows you to boost three times before restarting your power slide. The reserve boost system is still here, but it's not as extreme as the original where you would keep a boost for a long time. It's extremely fast paced, but nowhere near as chaotic as CTR. You also might have noticed the boost meter clearly showing, showing you the amount of boost you have consecutively. This is a cool feature, and I would say it's a new feature, but there was a cheat in the original that allowed you to do this, so ha! <laughs> a new feature that appears in the tracks is the anti-gravity carts. Velo explained that in the intro, he had made modifications to the earthling carts, so they could stand a chance on these tracks. So whenever the track transitions to these certain areas where the track would loop and go against the gravity, the cart would shift and allow you to race there. Once again, proving the point of the amount of possibilities the space and the other planet settings will allow for. Another cool new feature added are the exclamation crates. You remember those from the platformers that gave access to other boxes? They're here. What they do is activate a certain environmental obstruction, like on the track Barren Ruins where it activates this boulder to start rolling and will flatten all the races behind you for a short period, or on the track Assembly Lane where it activates this vortex to move across the track. I love this new feature. Another feature that was messed with a tiny bit in CTR, but changed a lot here is the jump animations. They were there in CTR, but wasn't anything to fuss about. But here, every character has a jump animation, such as Entrance lifting his hands up or Dingo Dial covering his eyes. Each character has something different and is a really nice minor addition, and this game looks great as well. For early to mid PS2 era, the environments are beautiful and has so many details. Just look at some of these environments and how much attention to detail was put into it. And it definitely looks like some of these tracks were inspired from CTR. Inferno Island is very similar to Crash Cove. Thunderstruck definitely feels like an interpretation of Hot Air Skyway. AKA the best track in any kart racer. And Clockwork Wumpa in this section definitely took some inspiration from the section in Cortex Castle. What does suck about the tracks is that they weren't really themed after the characters. Well, except Tiny Temple. I much preferred when nearly every character had their own themed track in CTR. There are six 16 playable characters in this game rather than the 15 Crash Team Racing had, not including Oxide of course. There are some new characters that have never appeared in Crash Bandicoot before, such as the aliens Zam and Zem, which I can tell you right now for a fact, no one gives a single fuck about. And also characters that have appeared in the previous Crash games after the trilogy, such as Crunch Bandicoot, one of the main villains turned good from the Wrath of Cortex, Entranced from the GBA title Crash Bandicoot 2 Entranced, which my brother used to call Pink Dick, and of course from Crash Team Racing, Nitrous Oxide, my god, what did they do to ya? Man, look how menacing you used to look, with your enormous size and your hovercraft. You just look pathetic here, bro. Look, Crash is bigger than you. And where did your other exhaust pipe go? What I love about the character system in this game is that each of them are split into teams. The teams consist of Team Bandicoot, consisting of Crash, Coco, and Crunch. Team Cortex, which consists of Cortex, and Jin and Tiny Tiger. Team Oxide, which consists of Zam and Zen. Again, no one gives a fuck about them. And a really interesting team with a team teammates are hypnotized. Team Entrance, which consists of Entrance, Polar, and Dingo Dial. Both of them are under Entrance's control and work with Velo, and each team has their own secret unlockable character and their own team cart, which doesn't just look different from each other, but sounds different as well. Team Bandicoot's cart sounds like your standard go-kart. Team Cortex's cart sounds like a muscle car or Harley Davidson motorbike, and the other two teams' cart have a very sci-fi sound to them. Also, what this team system does is actually had a whole new race type besides your regular arcade race. Team Race is a new mode in this game that consists of two characters per team in the race. If you and your chosen character's teammate stick close together for a while in the race, a meter will increase and when it's full, you get a power-up spree where you will receive as much power-ups as possible in a short amount of time. I really love the whole team aspect in this game. However, there is one problem. This game is all about teams, with the team race and the team-based adventure mode, and the fact that Crash Team Racing's boss was named Nitrous Oxide, Nitrous, I just want to know. Why the fuck is this game called Crash Nitro Kart and the original is called Crash Team Racing? I am confusion. I have a challenge for you. Rewatch this video and every time I say team, take a shot of bourbon. You will die. You will die. Of course, all the characters have different stats. This time, however, there isn't as much variety with the stats. Instead of having a tier where the character has all round stats like Crash and Cortex and Komodo Joe had in the original, that is completely wiped, however. This time, there are four stat classes that I've assigned rather than the five that CTR had. First, we have the C class characters Coco and Jin, which of course used to be the B plus class characters with their focus on acceleration, Polar and Zam. Their speed is low, but the turning is through the roof. Then the B class characters Crash, Cortex, 
Entrance, and Nitrous Oxide. Wow, Vicarious Vision's way to downgrade Oxide a bit more. This is the Intermediate class, where the stats of the characters mainly focus on acceleration and all-round stats. Then, of course, the A class. Crunch Bandicoot, Tiny Tiger, Dingo Dial, and Zem. These characters have an extremely high speed and extremely low turning, making it harder to control for beginners. This game also has an S class, which I'll talk about later. I also love the personality the characters have. Just like the first game, the characters will taunt each other and leave classic lines. This game just turns that up to 11, especially with what Dingo Dial says. Dingo Dial, watch your mouth, this game is rated G! Cup tournaments have made a comeback, but unfortunately comes with a problem. In Crash Team Racing, there was a whopping 18 tracks, but here there's only 13. What? Come on, this is PS2 compared to PS1. Surely they could add more tracks because of course the technical capabilities had vastly increased over the console generation. And it sucks because going back to the cup tournaments, there are only three tracks per cup instead of four. That straight up sucks because the game can now get really repetitive really quickly due to the amount of content it provides. At least they still kept the podium area and the each character's having their own individual victory animations. That's still a thing and I love it. Except for some, you can tell they reuse some of the same animations from CTR and the current character models because crap Crash's dance looks very jagged and, yeah, I don't think teeth are supposed to bend like that. And a lot of people like to complain about the true reason why Nitro Kart ruined Oxide in his victory animation. <laughs> I'm sorry, I fucking love it, don't hate me. In terms of power-ups, it's basically the same thing with a few minor additions. You've got your bowling bombs, to your heat-seeking missiles, to your TNT, to your entropic clocks. But here they've made a few replacements. Instead of embryo beakers, you have these... ice... Things that work in the exact same way. Instead of warp orbs, you have the tornado that works in the exact same way as well. But I have to say a lot worse than the warp orb because I find it to be a lot slower. And the weird thing they did with the shields is that you can't use it as a projectile anymore. What? Why was that removed? It had no reason to be removed. A new power-up, which is the big old zappy zap zap, that changes your power-up when you hit it. There was also a removed item, which is a voodoo doll that gives you a power-up spree. This was only available in the demo, however, and cannot be modded in. And you're probably wondering, but Danka, you slut! If there's Aku Aku and Uka Uka masks for Team Bandicoot and Cortex, what about Team Oxide and Entrance? Can you explain that, you dirty wog? Yes, I can. Bitch. Those guys get a velo mask, and all of them have their different tracks, just like CTR. Something I don't like about the power-up system is the Wumpa Fruit system. It works in the same way, where if you get 10, it upgrades your power-ups. But you only get 3 to 4 Wumpa Fruit per crate instead of the 5 to 8 you got in Crash Team Racing. It's not a terrible difference, but you have to put in more effort to have a very minor change to your power-ups. However, a really nice change to the Wumpa Fruit is that now, when you hit someone with your power-up, Wumpa Fruit they were carrying will drop out of them, allowing you to collect it. A nice touch if you ask me, but no one asked me. No matter what I do or say, I'm not funny. Okay, we know how Adventure Mode in CTR had a fair bit of content to mess around with and turned out pretty well for the most part. Well, except for the boss races, which were quite pathetic. And in terms of cutscenes and plot, can it do better than... Forget about it. Boom, down, race. And boom, Babu is world's best driver. Foy. Babu moves so fast, you much drive. Foy, foy, foy. Honestly, is about the same. But slightly different. Instead of choosing the character you want to play as through the entire adventure mode, you choose the team you would like to play as. Team Bandicoot or Team Cortex. Again, why is this game not called Crash Team Racing? This is really cool from one standpoint, as you can change to any of the three characters anytime you want. This can be really useful when racing on the tracks with sharper turns and switching to Coco or Engine. It's also really cool because every race, instead of just having a regular race, you race in a team race. The bad thing about it is there are only two teams which you can play as, and you can't choose to play as Team Oxide and Entrance. Why? This means that there were eight playable characters in CTR Adventure Mode, and in CNK, there are only six. Yeah, and the secret characters from their teams, Fake Crash and Entropy, aren't even playable if you unlock them. And they're a part of the team. Like, come on, what's with all this cut content? This is PS2 we're talking about here. It's weird how a PS1 game has more content than this. The only excuse I see for that is that in CTR there were only one set of cutscenes for Adventure Mode, but here there is two, one for each team. I don't know, I feel like they could do a lot more with this game, and they just didn't. Adventure Mode works in basically the same way as CTR. It works in a hub world system, but instead of different areas to drive to, it's different planets. 
Terra, the jungle planet, Baron, the snow planet, Phenomena, the time planet, Techni, the electric planet, and Velo's Colosseum. You warp through different portals to different planets. In terms of races and collectibles, you race in a track, receive a trophy, and unlock the next track. Getting three trophies in an area shows you a cutscene of Velo introducing the boss of that area. Oh, uh, come on, that's just monkey papu papu. The boss races in this game are still a bit shit, but honestly, better. But still shit. And unfortunately, all the bosses are new characters and not ones to get nostalgic over like CTR. Instead of just the random power-ups the CTR bosses use, these ones have their own power-ups which differ from the regular ones and do different things. They still exploit the living piss out of it, but at least there's slightly more creativity here. One boss race that I like is Norm's boss race. Instead of just facing this mime dude, you face this mime dude and... <gasps> Big Chungus 5? Realistically, this is the third boss race, and Komodo Joe's from CTR was also the third boss race. This is what CTR should have been. Instead of just racing Joe, you should have raced both of the Komodo bros, Joe and Mo. I can't help to feel like Vicarious were just hinting at this in some way. When beating all the bosses and receiving all the keys, you get to compete in the Galaxy Championship Final, where you verse me. This opens one of the coolest tracks in any kart racer ever, Hyper Spaceway. You start off in the Colosseum with a black void underneath you, and you teleport constantly to different areas of space, even to an area where you can see the Colosseum in the distance. I gotta say, if you think that Oxide Station from CTI is cooler than Hyper Spaceway from CNK, you have problems. Oxide Station is so boring compared to this track, and I'll tell you right now, Hyper Spaceway is my favorite track in the game. Doesn't be hot air skyway though. <laughs> so as it goes, you beat Velo and he gets pissed off. But of course, he says he will destroy Earth if you don't complete all the time relics and face him again. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. So you redo all the races and choose the relic race where you have to hit all the boxes that reduce the time and get a really fast time to receive a relic. And you do the CNK races where you have to collect the C, N, and K letters and come first to receive a CNK token. We ran over this in CTR, didn't we? And you eventually unlock the cup tournaments in Velo's vault where you can unlock Zam and Zem. Again, no gives a fuck about them, Dingo Dial and Polar. You face Velo and beat him again. And plot twist, Velo is just a small alien in a suit. So the final cutscene shows Team Bandicoot and Cortex's scenarios after they become Galaxy Champions. So honestly, it's a better and more lighthearted story than CTR, but it's still stupid. My god, it's still stupid. But who cares? It's a kart racer. And then of course, there's the extra content, such as the battle mode and the extra unlockables. There are four secret characters a part of this S-Class. Fake Crash, which is an upgraded version of the B-Class characters, and Pearl, which is an upgraded version of the C-Class characters. Fake Crash can be unlocked when achieving 50 consecutive boosts in adventure mode with Team Cortex. And Pearl can be unlocked when achieving 50 consecutive boosts in adventure mode with Team Bandicoot. And Tropy, which is an upgraded version of the A-Class characters. He is unlocked in the same way as CTR. Beat all of his time trials in time trial mode. Straightforward. And one last character, Real Velo, the only character with max stats. Unfortunately, none of the bosses are playable characters, but Velo is unlocked when completing adventure mode twice, one with Team Bandicoot and one with Team Cortex. So once again, despite all the cut content this game has compared to CTR, there's still a fair bit of playtime for you. You know what? This is the most underrated Crash game I have ever played. Sure, there isn't as much content as CTR, and that is pretty disappointing for a next generation game. And yeah, it's not as fast and chaotic as its predecessor. But I'll tell you right now, people call this a bad game. No way. This game is pretty damn good and feels like a low-key upgrade of CTR. It's smoother, it looks nice for early to mid PS2 era, and has a lot of personality and a way more interesting story than CTR. And minor details has been improved and some hasn't been improved. It doesn't have the specific colors for every race that to see in the track like CTR had, but something really positive is that on the team race, each team has their own color-coded color. Another small detail that this game definitely improves on is the fact that you pick the track before the character. This is great because in CTR, you have to go back to the character select screen to choose the better playable character for specific tracks. Something I didn't like about CTR as well is that the competitors in the race would never change. No matter which characters you chose, Crash, Cortex, Tiny, Coco, Engine, Dingo Dial, and Polo would be in the race. Here, that's not the case. There is always two competitors from each team. And I'll tell you right now, this game is definitely a lot harder than CTR. CTR honestly became way too easy for me once I got good at it. Not to humble bag, of course. But this game definitely has a better difficulty curve. The AI is smarter and faster. And the Velo Ghost Times on Time Trial mode, honestly, is way harder than the Oxide Ghost Times. And that's saying a lot, because Oxide Ghost Times were ridiculous. It goes to show that this game is a surprisingly good game for something that's frowned upon a lot. This game is extremely underrated. Nevertheless, though, Crash Nitro Kart. 
makes the good list and gets a 7.5 out of 10. As we know, CTR still dominated, but the good thing is that this game improved some of those details that needed improving on CTR. Sure, they were minor, but they still improved it. And sure, there's plenty of room for improvement here, and it does feel like a downgrade of CTR. But can the next Crash Racer top this game? Stick around till next week, where we cover Crash Tag Team Racing. Thank you all so much for watching this video to the end. I honestly can't thank you enough. Definitely consider subscribing with those notifications turned on, share this video around, and smack the like button. Don't forget, next week we cover the infamous Crash Tag Team Racing, and I'll talk to you before you know it. See you later.